Hi, I'm Michael Nadalin, and today's video is about what you need to look at when you're reviewing your Google Ads account. Now, this is pretty much a summary of what I do when I order an account for a client. So I thought I'd just quickly share this. I'm gonna jump into Loom today and actually just go through a few slides with you. I feel like this might go a bit longer than I'm used to, but just stick around for it. I guarantee you'll pick up a thing or two that you don't usually do. Enjoy. Excellent, let's jump in. So what to look for when you're auditing an account. Now, this is my very high level list of things I look at. These are a few things that I really like to focus on because they're quite outcome focused and they're the things that actually help you get the highest amount of you know, outcomes and better results with the least amount of time, especially when I'm auditing an account being a new client or just an account that I've been working on for a while that just needs a bit of a you know, fresh look at again. So rather than going through extensive lists online, which are quite abundantly available, you can just follow this uh, video. Now, a lot of those lists are really, really good, but the problem is there's, cause there's so many things in it, you're most likely not going to do it all. So this is really a simplified version of it that if you just follow this video, just watch it, these things will actually really help you. So number one, the thing I speak about a thousand times in each video is tracking. Now always start with conversion tracking. Uh, this is the area where most of the issues start, begin, and end. So if you do fix this, a lot of things start to fix themselves out. I can't mention the amount of times I pick up an account and audit an account or just look at things that there are just tracking issues full stop. So making sure that they're all the retracking codes are on the website, being at the base pixels, uh, the Google Tag Manager, the Google Analytics, but then making sure that most importantly after that, the conversion tracking's there. Now, a lot of the time the conversion tracking isn't there or they're tracking the wrong things or there's micro conversions, not macro conversions, random conversions. So things, just making sure you're really clear from that at the start because especially in this new automated bidding model way first, you wanna make sure that you've got the highest intent or highest quality conversions there because Google and any other ad platform is gonna be optimizing towards those. So really focus on that. The part that no one really speaks about with the audit is just uh, review and test the landing page and website. Like when you go there, just submit a conversion and actually just make sure that it goes through and it's all tracking. The last thing you want is actually you think that conversions are tracking, but then when you test it yourself on different segments of the website, then nothing actually happens. So it helps just to spend five or 10 minutes just reviewing these things, being it in uh, Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics or whatever platform is your um, focus. So this is always where the issues begin. So just focus on this, get it done. When you're doing an audit, this is the thing that a lot of people just bypass because they're too focused on the account and they're not actually focused on, well, if this isn't done right, then the account, nothing in the account's actually gonna look good full stop. The next part is the landing page. So the results will always reflect the page it goes to. So before you actually start auditing an account or a while audit account, I just check out the page it's going to because this will make such a significant impact on the, the results overall. So things when I look at the pages, I just try to figure out firstly, like clarity on what the business does. Like I might know what the business does, but maybe this part of the business or what I'm focusing on, I'm not sure of. And if someone's looking for your product or if you're on a more of a disruptive network like Facebook, you want it to be that when people get to the page, they actually know what's going on. So this isn't always just about what's happening on the paid side. It's also what's happening on the web side. Now, the next part is like headlines. Is it a clear headline? Do they understand what this page is about? Is there an offer on the page? Is there actually something that's enticing to go towards? The next part is there, is there a call to action on the page? Like telling people what they need to do next. And then the next one, it's quite silly, but like the ability to take action, like firstly, is there a call to action? And then do they actually have the ability to take action or are they navigating around the website trying to do heaps of things that uh, just won't get them the result they want? So that's a big one. Definitely focus on that. Not many people really talk about that when about auditing, uh, but it's a really good place just to start off on the second step. Now we can look at the account. So where I usually start after I've looked at the pages and the conversions is reviewing the search terms. So are they relevant to the product or service? A lot of the times when accounts are going well, uh, they are relevant. And when they're not going well, it's just there's a lot of trash and rubbish traffic coming in. So this is an area where you can really uh, make strong improvements that, you know, if you just diagnose this well, a lot of improvements will be made. So reviewing the search terms of what traffic is coming through to the website 
And then the next part of it is the keywords, which is review the keywords. Are they actually relevant to the product or service? Like the search terms in the last slide, which are right here, are only reflective of the keywords. So if you've got poor keywords or too many keywords or not the right keywords, you're only going to get a certain type of traffic, which is going to get a certain type of search term. So this is about reverse engineering, actually starting to say like, what's the input to get the output? So the input would be the keywords, the output is the search terms. So this is super important. It's probably on the, the most important thing out of anything on Google search. The next thing is settings. So a setting is done to best practice. There are like probably about five, six, seven main settings that are really important that if you get them wrong, like this is where 80% of your budget can be robbed. So if you fix this and do it right, you'll get outstanding results. But if these are just wrong, everything else is right. The landing page, the uh, tracking, the keywords, and this is wrong, you'll lose money. So don't bypass this. The settings are probably one of the most important things as well that are kind of just like passively in the background. So before you focus on the ads or keywords, just focus on your settings. Now, you know what time it is. So this is what I'm going to be doing in all my videos now. Uh, this does help my channel. So if you like this, please like it. If you want to know a bit more, you can comment. But most importantly, if you subscribe, you'll be getting amazing information about Google Ads and paid advertising regularly. So um, public service announcement, please like, comment and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And then the next part is, uh, it's your time to be number one. So I was only a referral agency for a while now, but my team actually is expanding and the capabilities as well. So market lead is now taking on new clients. So if you're serious about increasing sales, increasing customers and scaling your business with Google ads and paid ads, uh, you can actually book a strategy session with myself uh, that might not be forever and I'll also give you a free action plan. So these calls are really good diagnosis call and just actually focusing on next steps so regardless if we work together there's like you can do stuff yourself so you can just go to marketlead.com.au and then you can follow the steps there to um, book in a strategy session uh, these are only available to business owners and marketing managers i get a lot of specialists wanting to answer questions i don't have the uh, capacity to do that at the moment i'm planning to do a course sometime soon but at the moment this is just for businesses and marketing managers or people who are running ad accounts uh, that needs uh, support and are looking to actually have someone manage it for them because you know that's my business so let's continue so the next part is budget and budget allocation so where is the budget allocated is it allocated towards high converting keywords or ad groups or is it just being allocated in random areas so a lot of times in accounts when i'm auditing them one of the biggest issues is uh just the budget's just random like it's just like there it's balanced like and sometimes i do that for my clients as well it's just like keep it like you've got a daily budget that you've got to stick to but this way you can actually um make sure that like when you're allocating budgets actually towards high converting areas or high selling areas or high lead generating areas so going on the back of that is, are the key top keywords segmented out? So for lead generation specifically, uh, you want to make sure that top keywords, things that actually get the best results are segmented out so you can have maximum budget and impression share. Sometimes the challenge with accounts is when you've got winning keywords with a lot of other keywords, uh, the other keywords that do convert but not at the top converters can be sucking away budget. So if you've got a limited budget, you want to make sure that you really do pull out those top converting keywords in through their own campaign. And when you're doing that, you'll actually be able to allocate maximum budget because you know you get maximum results. And to ensure that the impression share is high, there's nothing worse than having high converting keywords that have a 30% impression share. Well, you know, if you could just move budget across and give more, you'll be getting more leads, cheaper costs, and everyone's laughing. In terms of e-commerce, uh, this is a this is a bit of a tougher area because, like, the audit it will be reflective of the data, and it's there's no like one size fits all for e-commerce. But things I really like to focus are are the top products or product categories segmented out, so there's a bit more granular control rather than things just being in one place. What shopping campaigns are being used? Is it standard shopping, uh, the recently retired uh, smart shopping, or is it performance max? And then more importantly, beyond all of that, is that's more on the strategy side, is like the products. Like what are the top products? How are they sold? Are they in stock? Like there's a lot of times where there's top products that are not in stock or top products that 
how they're sold is probably through multiples. So rather than being sold one item every sale, like people buy five of them. So if, if it's a low ticket product and people go, ah, oh, the margins aren't good or, you know, uh, the sales volume isn't high, but then people actually buy five to 10 of them. It's really important to understand that because that's where a lot of people get it wrong. They think people are looking for one product and they're going to click on that one product and then just buying one of that product rather than buying multiples of it or clicking on products and finding other things as well. The last one is, and this is one of my favorites because I'm a nerd, uh, is reviewing the metrics in Google Analytics to get further insights into everything. This is like a gold mine for practical and actionable data. Now, whilst it won't tell you what to do or why to do it, it just gives data that can give you more insight than the ad platforms could itself. So it's a really good place that this is an area that I'd recommend anyone who does paid ads or if you're a business owner, really understand Google Analytics because it will give you such a broad and amazing insight into your business without you actually having to do heaps of crazy stuff like it's a free product all you gotta do is put a bit of code on your website and it gives you such radical transparency on everything in terms of where traffic's coming from what they're doing on your website if it's an e-commerce like such granular details about it and just pulling in data from shopify for example so really really important there and so when i'm auditing an account i just did a paid audit uh, over the last few days was i requested this because i could just look at the account and give them like what they want to hear but this is what they also need to hear as well so this gives a bit more granular insight but also really practical and actionable data as well so that's the video for today um i hope you enjoyed it it's gone for 11 minutes on this loom but going back to this main slide here you know what the time is. So if you like this, please um, like, comment, and subscribe. If you've got any questions about these types of things, anything you think I missed, I'd love to hear. I'm sure if you say I've missed something, I'll agree with you. But these are the things I tend to go over with my clients or the prospects or the audits I go over and just makes it really simple and clear. So there's more of a framework. So rather than getting caught in the nitty gritty too much, it's really like a step-by-step process of how to do this quite fast as well. Like you don't need to be spending hours on this. You could do this in 20 minutes and get really practical and actionable things from it. So I'll leave it there and um, enjoy.